All right, so we're in part two of the salt box houses that I'm happening to be painting today. I do different ones. Today's salt box house, okay? Just for your viewing pleasure. And so now we're going to continue on. We made the land, we made the home, we made the roof, and we're going to do the windows, okay? Same black. Just make sure you got a little water on your brush there. And I'm sorry to keep putting my arm in front of you, but my water thing is behind you. And it's it's hard to paint them this way. You gotta have a steady hand like a surgeon to do this up in the air. But you're just gonna make squares and fill it in. Squares and fill it in. And I did talk on another video about the acrylic paint pen. If you like using the acrylic paint pen, hey, go for it. And you can make your squares with that. Actually, if I wanted to, I could take out my marker right now. I use the Sharpie markers. They're a lot less expensive. I explained that in another video. And I could actually make these little squares with that. But since I got my black paint out and all ready, there's my little salt box windows. And here comes the, the squares. And here comes the little rectangle door. And we make it long. One thing about primitive stuff is it's usually a little bit more exaggerated than, than what you would normally see in life. So the door is long and lanky. All right. And that's it. That's the salt box house. Let's do another one. All right, really quick square. And I'm saying quick because I am doing these really quick and on an angle. Square. Square. I you messed up that square, so I'll just extend it a little bit longer. Can't see my paint too good here. I'm losing the light, my natural light. I got a brand new light coming tomorrow, and I am so thrilled because I'll be able to see better than what I'm doing. So here comes your long rectangle. Just fill it in. All right. And there you have it. We're almost there. What are we going to do now? We're going to make a cypress tree to go onto the side of the house. Okay. So let's get out a little bit of brown. What am I using for brown today? Okay, so I've got some folk art outdoor paint. I don't even care if it's indoor or outdoor paint. Okay, I just look to see if it's brown. Does it look like brown? Then I'm going to get it if it's cheap enough. And it's not because I'm a cheap person. I just don't, I just don't feel like paying, you know, more, more money for things than I don't really need to. So I'm going to find my little brown area here. I really put way too much in there. And I don't even usually take the time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't even usually take the time to put the excess paint back in their little jars. So I do waste quite a bit of it. So I'm going to still use my tiny brush to make my trunk. We're going to make the trunk of the tree in a dark brown color. You're going to see this is a very, very difficult situation. And here's the difficulty. You ready? Bam. A straight line. Done. Go over to this one. Bam, a straight line. Okay, maybe not so straight, but then again, primitive. Primitive means you can mess it up and it still looks good. Okay. Now, in all seriousness, this is going to be a little bit of fancy painting to make the cypress tree. And you're going to see that it's going to be, it's going to go pretty quick. But it's a little bit fancier than just making a line. Okay, so I'm going back to my dark green here, uh, number four. Oops. It was facing the right way. And I'm going to use a flat brush. Oops, here we go. A uh, flat brush. It's thin on one side, you know, whatever. You know what I got my brush, where I got my brushes, how much I got them for if you watch my previous videos. We're going to dampen that brush a little bit, you know, just to get it in working order. Turn these upside down. All right, I'm going to dip about half of the brush into this paint. I'm going to put a good amount of, 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 of paint on this brush. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to take the side of the brush and we're going to push it against the top of that tree trunk like that. And then we're going to, we're going to move away from the tree. And as we do, we're going to lift up that brush. Okay. And we can even do it again if we want, just to make sure it gets covered right. And there you have it. And you've got a primitive cypress tree when you're done. Same thing here. It's like one of those one stroke things and I didn't rinse off the brush or nothing before I started this one. And these aren't even dry yet. The trunks aren't dry. Push down. 
and uh, lift up the paint brush a little as you're as you're going down when you're going down down up up with the brush up 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 okay your tree is done bam okay this actual we're almost done here all we've got to do now is those lines around the edge remember what i told you about those those lines around the edge i mentioned those in my one of my craft room videos on how to save your money uh, once again i do not use the acrylic pen i use a sharpie marker and these come in packs for like two dollars you can get a pack of four or five of them and the acrylic pen will cost you about four dollars for the pen and you gotta shake it and i actually tried that pen once and you gotta shake it and i shook it once when it didn't have the cap on it and, and black paint went flying everywhere i'm like you know annoying not needed in my world okay so let's make our little dot my little lines and i'm trying to see how i can do this at a better angle for you to see and i'll start oh, let's see how can i do this where you can see it well well because i'm not left-handed i'm going to put you on the other side and face you this way there we go all right so we're going to make some lines get some stuff out of the way here and the lines are start wherever you want okay make a line a line a line a line a line and every once in a while you can make one of those symbols that looks like a number symbol cross cross again up 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 it doesn't matter if some paint gets on the back that just makes it look more primitive looking later on okay and we do more line we move another one of those crosses and we keep going along the edge line 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 maybe another cross all right we're keeping it going i'm not going to do two of these because you can get boring sometimes i watch videos on how people paint these things and it, it can get a little boring trying not to make you bored so i think i'll sing you a little song la 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 uh -huh. i'm almost done now dee, dee, dee. Ah, da, da. okay i'm done all right now there you go you have it and it gives it a more polished look in the end a more finished primitive look and now I'm going to put the words salt box here. Sometimes I make things where I don't leave enough room for words, so I don't put words. Sometimes I'll put salt box. Sometimes I'll put Merry Christmas if it's the Santas. Or if it's a lamb, I'll just put, you know, or a sheep, I'll just put sheep. Or I'll put simplify and all those inspirational words that go well today. So I'm just going to print out the word salt box, however, you know, box letters. And to make that a little bit more stand out, at the tips of each letter, I will make a circle, you know, maybe I'll do the whole T and the whole L, the tips of the B, one little one at the top of the O, and the tips of the X, and there you have it. It's completed. This one's completed, and this was the original one. Not much of a difference other than the color in the house, and you can make the house whatever color you want, but primitively, they really should stay within the red realm or the barn red realm or even the mustard. But the mustard doesn't look good against the manila background of the tag, okay? And that's it. It's done. You make a bunch of those. I got 500 of them to, to paint. So if I'm going to do 500 tags, uh, you know, I'm hoping I get them all done before Christmas. And that's why I tell you that I stop my crafting the day after the last Christmas show because then... It's, you know, you have all the time in the world to do what you want when you want to do it. And um, you can pick and choose. I might want to do my candy canes. I might want to do my eggs one day. I might want to sew some chenille. I might want to um, make a, a book safe. You know, whatever I feel like doing um, that particular day. These are great to do while you're watching an old movie. You know, you're watching an old movie and you just paint a bunch of the land and the pasture. Or you want to paint a Santa uh, or, or a snowman or, you know, a little sheep. And they, they're very simple to do, and you can get a lot of them done. Uh, you know, you can you can probably do a hundred of them doing an old during an old movie once you get going. So there you have it. It's a wonderful thing, and you know, I like I said, I only charge twenty five cents for my tags. I leave the back of them blank so they can put to and from, or if it's going to be shipped, they can put an address and what have you. But I hope you enjoyed my my. Uh, my grungy tag painting video and uh 
we'll see what we're going to do next time. It's always a surprise, but I'm always here to try to save you money. This is the whole idea is to save you money and have fun doing it in your crafting world. Okay. And so watch the rest of my videos. You're going to learn a lot on those videos too on how to save money in your crafting world. And if you want to make something different than what I make, just look it up and get the inspiration by going to Google. Uh, you, let's say you want to do a, a, a dog, okay? Put in the words primitive dog and then go to images and then see everything that comes up. And maybe you see a primitive dog and a stuffed animal. You can still replicate it in some kind of painting form. You'll, you'll get inspired on how to do a dog, you know, maybe just some long lanky dog with a big, with big long ears or, or something like that. And, you know, that's how I get my ideas is by watching other things and looking at pictures and, and stuff like that. And I'll get into that more when, when I go to talk about how I paint my eggs. And I'm waiting to get my really, really good lighting before I do my egg painting. And um, I'll be setting up my camcorder in a better position for you, too. Anyway, that's it. Signing off from Prim and Proper Designs. And I hope you learned a lot today. And happy crafting.